If you want to know how to run your gasoline generator on propane or natural gas for about 30 bucks, stick with us through this video. By the end of it, you'll have a handle on things. What we're doing today is we're going to take our generator and change it from gasoline to propane. We've got a kit here that is a propane, natural gas, and gasoline conversion set up, and it's cheap off of eBay. I think we spent $30 on it, and that includes the shipping. Now there's some setups out there that you can spend several hundred dollars on uh, to do the, exactly the same thing. We just don't believe in spending that kind of money on, on something like this if we can help it. This setup comes with everything you need to install it except for the directions. And they'd probably be in Chinglish anyhow, so what's the difference? So we're going to show you how to put it in and we're going to show you how to get it started and follow us if you like to see it. This $30 kit comes with the tri-fuel carburetor, the necessary gaskets for many generators, and the choke control. Tools you're going to need include the basics, and that includes metric sockets and wrenches, and some screwdrivers and things like that. We've installed these conversion kits on generators in the past, up to 4,000 watts or so, and they work just fine. This is the generator we're converting today. The first thing we need to do is locate the air box and open it up. Remove the air filter and any other item that's in the way. Locate the proper size socket for the job, in this case 10 millimeter, and remove the air box. There's one screw inside. On this model, there's also a bolt on the outside and a breather tube that needs to be removed in order to remove the airbox. This breather tube has a clamp. Just slide it up, pull it off. This breather tube just pushes in. Just pull it out of the way. And there's always just one more bolt in the way. We'll take that one out too. All the bolts are off. We're going to pull the airbox off. Put the nuts and bolts inside of it so they don't get lost. As you can see, the gaskets on the old carburetor match up with the gaskets that they provided us. So, so far we're not waving any red flags. Everything looks like it's going to fit. Now that we have the carburetor exposed, we're going to remove the choke lever and set it aside. Now you can reuse this choke lever if you have to, but it's exactly identical to the one that came with the kit. The fuel line is a pretty simple assembly. We have a little pinch clamp here that I'm going to push up the fuel line and get it out of the way. And then just grab a hold of the fuel line, making sure that the fuel is off. Grab a hold of the fuel line and pull it right off the carburetor which is sometimes easier said than done. Now set this fuel line aside. Now the carburetor is sitting loose on these bolts and as you slide it forward, this throttle connection comes in line with the throttle linkage. Just push the throttle linkage right up out of the way. And then there's this spring here and the spring just goes through a little bitty hole in this throttle linkage. What's the spring for? It's for aggravating you. That's about all I know about it. So we're going to go ahead and remove this spring out of the hole. Our carburetor is now disconnected and can come right off the machine. Set this carburetor aside. It probably has a little fuel, old fuel in the, in the bowl still. So set it aside in a way that it's not going to spill. Now if you look at the old gasket and the new gasket, you'll see that we're a good match. We're going to take the old gasket off and put the new gasket on just because it came with it. If your old gasket is still usable, you certainly can go ahead and use that. Now that the gasket is seated properly, we can install the new carburetor system. There is no RTV silicone between this gasket and the carburetor. There wasn't before, there isn't now. 
Here's the carburetor that came with the conversion kit. It's going to get mounted with the regulator face outward. The gas line connection is going to be facing the gas line. We're simply going to take and slide it over the top of the two bolts that the other one came off of. It slides in. Don't forget to connect your throttle linkage. It goes back on the same way that it came off. And now for the nuisance. This little spring needs to be fed through the little hole that's right next to the throttle linkage. So just like that. Then slide it in. Install the new gasket here as well. And you're most of the way there. Let's put our fuel line back on. This is a good time to check your fuel line to make sure that it's not dried and cracked. Push it onto that fuel line connection. And put that little spring clip back in place. All right, this is the choke control lever. Don't forget to put this on or it's a real pain to deal with after the airbox is on. It sits on top of this pin and there's a little pin right here that goes down in a hole on the choke control. Once you have it installed, you'll see it moves the butterfly. All right, with the carburetor conversion kit installed, and the gasket in place and seated, we're ready to put the airbox back on. We're simply going to slip it over the top of those two bolts that the carburetor sat on and work it in there. Grab the bolts and nuts that we didn't lose and thread them on. There's the front one. Here's the side one. Run that all back down snug with your wrench. You don't need to crank it all the way down super tight. Let's make sure our choke control still works. Everything's good there. And then reassemble the airbox. All right, our kit's installed. Everything's the way it should be. It's time to talk about regulators. The regulator that you're gonna want is a high pressure adjustable regulator. The high pressure part, you don't care about. You don't want high pressure. You want low pressure, about a pound and a half. But if you buy a pound and a half regulator, you can do that, but it's not going to give you the adjustability to be able to fine tune this thing after you get it running and make it purr like a kitten. So at that point, if you have no adjustability, if it sucks when it runs, it runs like a dog, it's just gonna run like a dog. So this adjustable high pressure regulator, you can find online for about 30 bucks, or you can find it at a lot of the big box stores. Now here's the bad news. The hose that's on these comes with a fitting that does not fit this. This kit comes with a large barbed fitting that won't fit inside that hose. So you're gonna to have to come up with a way to transition from that barb fitting to this hose. 
Now with a pound and a half of pressure, it doesn't have to be too fancy. What we've come up with is just a larger piece of hose with some hose clamps on it that makes the transition from that to this. Okay, so here we are. We've got our propane conversion kit installed. We've got a gas tank attached and we're ready to use it, but we need to know how to use it first. So we're gonna make sure that the gasoline is still shut off. I know that it is, we haven't turned it on. In the event that we'd been using gasoline and running this generator after we put this conversion kit on, we'd have to shut off the gas, then drain any gas that's in the bowl before we can switch over to propane. That's what this is, is it's a drain for the bowl to drain the gasoline out. Uh, in our case, we don't have to worry about that. This red switch here, or red valve, is a valve to switch between propane and natural gas. In the event that you're hooking it up to your house in the city, and you have natural gas, that's an option. We only use it in the propane position, uh, the LPG position. If you have it in the wrong position, it may run a little bit worse. Just go ahead and switch it over. It's not gonna hurt anything that we know of. This white thing in the middle here, that's to purge the air when you hook up your propane. Just push it a couple times, let the air come out of the system. That lets propane get in there without air locking uh, any oxygen in there causing problems for you. So then you turn your, your generator to on, and go right well you've got to go ahead and turn your regulator to off then open the gas bottle and open it all the way up then open your adjustable regulator just a little ways remember you only want a pound and a half you're going to start your generator it's going to run poorly and then you're going to adjust the amount of gas flow that it's getting until it purrs like a kitten All right, this video wouldn't be complete unless you heard the machine running. So even though we're inside the barn here, uh, we've got the door open, so we're not gonna get asphyxiated. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start the machine for you and show you how it runs. Turn the generator on. We're gonna use an electric drill to start our motor here. All right, the propane's turned off. Now we can't stress enough that if you turn this thing on and the first time it runs like heck, it won't run hardly at all, it is flooded. There's no question, it is flooded, almost certainly. So what you're gonna wanna do is shut your gas off completely, try to start the, the generator so that you can burn any gas out that's in the system and then start over with a fresh start. If, uh, if you don't do that, we have had no luck with getting the machine running properly any other way. So there you have it. The machine runs smoothly. It cost us about 30 bucks to do this. And it really took no time at all to speak of. It's as easy as it looks. If you have any trouble getting your machine running smoothly, yeah, there's a 99% chance that you're giving it too much gas or you've got it flooded. So go ahead and deal with that situation and you're gonna be back up and running quickly. Uh, we did start our machine with a electric power drill and a socket uh, that's been modified so that we didn't hurt ourselves with it. If you want to know more about that, ask. We'll be happy to talk about it. And remember, if you liked what you saw here, please hit the like button and subscribe, and we will see you on the next video.